asked to fixate on a light and the suction is put on. So the eye is now stabilized. Okay, so there is a liquid optics interface. Saline comes into the patient interface device after which the shine plug images are taken. Change the patient. And the docking is done. So you see the PID light is there, madam. It fits into the suction ring. We're starting with the live surgery now. Welcome everyone to the cataract OT of Netradama Eye Hospital. Uh, we're starting with the first case today. I'm using the Quatera 700 machine. Uh, this is a 72-year-old female um, with a grade 2 cataract. There's a lag. Close, please. Okay. So this is a 72-year-old female and we're operating on the right eye. There's a grade 2 cataract. Uh, I'm using the Quatera 700 machine today and the Atlisa Trifocal Toric IOL, saline cornea. There we go with the incisions. The femto capsulotomy is already done. We always use intracameral xylocaine for topical cases. I'm just using HPMC 2% here and using a microrexis forceps to peel off the capsule, which is generally free-floating. So Priya, are there any problems ever with the toric noctures that you have in the rexis? No, they're very strong. Actually, uh, they're just like an extension of the rexis margin itself, and there's no chances. We've never had any uh, capsule extensions or anything with these knobs. I'm just doing the hydro dissection now. You can see the posterior fluid wave, the nucleus rise, is decompressing and rotating the nucleus. I saw there very little gas. You didn't even have to release gas. Yes, we don't have to release the gas. We can just do a gentle hydro, gentle hydro dissection and decompress the nucleus and that's it. So this is the Quatera 700. My settings are um, 650 vacuum and I'm using a vacuum controlled mode. 
the flow rate is about 90. I'm doing a direct chop technique here. We've got to angulate this tip quite a bit. It's a straight tip. That's the first chop through and through. Just rotating the nucleus and going for the second chop. There we have it. Very, very nice chop, Supriya. Wonderful. So this machine has a quattro pump. So it has uh, two chambers for irrigation and two chambers for aspiration. And the fluidics are very balanced. So you see that I have a minimal uh, surge or any anterior fluctuations. It's quite a soft cataract. So the chamber is quite rock solid and I'm able to easily remove all the pieces. With minimal FACO. I'm just using very little FACO energy here. And that's it. That's the nucleus management. We're moving on to the IA. So you can see that the nubs are quite stable. And it gives me a very clear idea of where I need to align the lens. The IOL that I'll be using today is the Atlisa Trifocal Toric Lens. It's a diffractive lens with a bitoric surface. So I like to use a coaxial IA for the cortical removal. In most cases, except very complex cases, mature cataracts where I make the right side port as well. You can see that the sub-incisional cortex with the femto, when we use a femto capsulotomy, it takes a little more time because the anterocortical fibers get cut by the femto as well. And there we have it, the cortex is removed. And there are some small fibers there. I'm just doing a hydro polish and just removing those small fibers. We have a nice clean canvas for the IOL implantation. I'm just using plain HPMC 2% to fill the bag before injecting the lens. So this is a preloaded lens. It comes in the Blue Mix injector. What's your incision size? It's 2.4. It's a 2.4 incision. So it's a 2.2 uh, tip. But uh, I'm more comfortable with a 2.4 incision, and it does not make any difference to the leak or the chamber stability. But it gives you a little more room for smooth IOL injection. So this lens gives you great uh, vision for distance, interme intermediate, and near. And uh, the intermediate is at around 70 centimeters for this lens. It's a hydrophilic acrylic lens with four plate haptics. So you can see I can quickly and easily, as I'm doing the IA itself, just align the lens to the knobs. I'm going to switch to a retro illumination so the knobs are seen. Can you see the knobs? Yes. Yeah, so it's seen a little more clearly. And as we're just removing all the visco there, I'm doing a rock and roll technique to remove the visco from the bag. You can see that the lens is fairly well aligned and quite stable. Which uh, visco elastic are you using? It's HPMC 2%. I routinely use HPMC 2% unless I need a, co a cohesive visco elastic for some specific reason or a viscoat. If it's a very dense cataract to protect the endothelium. I will use a viscoat. So yes, the lens appears fairly stable and it's well aligned on the intelli-axis of the lens AR system. And that's the end of the surgery. 
So I have a beautiful surgical cockpit here. I hope you can see it on the external camera. It consists of the Quatera 700, the Kilisto, and the Artivo 800. So it gives me full control as I'm doing the surgery. I can see all the patient details on the Artivo 800 screen. My assistant can actually see the entire surgery on the screen of the Quatera 700. So it's extremely comfortable. And that's the end of the case. Thank you very much. Adam, like Karnasthadia. Supriya, that was beautiful surgery. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Can I ask you one question regarding the four-chamber technology on the Quatera Absolutely. machine? Yes. It's supposed to make the anterior chamber much more stable with much less surge than other machines around. Yes, so we how find aggressive can we be? Because, you know, I'm a pre-chopper, so when I've got four free quadrants, I'd like to go aggressive, high FACO, in a high vacuum and evacuate them. Would this technology allow me to do, do that safely, do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. So you, as you saw, my settings were about 650 vacuum and 90 flow rate on the vacuum control mode. So those, those are the highest settings possible on the machine. And the chamber was actually rock solid. I was able to bury and chop. The holdability is excellent on this machine. There's no surge, there's no chamber fluctuations. Uh, it allows you to operate at the highest parameters and it allows allows you to use a, a low FACO energy. Um, so it's a more vacuum-based system rather than a FACO-based system. And uh, that's how it works really well. You get a good uh, anterior, anterior chamber currents are really great. So the pieces just come to the tip. The followability is great, especially if there's four pre-chopped pieces. You don't even need to use a second instrument. It just comes to the tip. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned you were using the vacuum system. There's also a flow system, right? There's also a flow system uh, you where you can set that? the flow rate. So uh, it's neither a peristaltic nor a venturi pump. It is a, a membrane pump. So there are four chambers. There are two chambers for irrigation, two chambers for aspiration. And they work synchronously so that there's no lag in the entire system. And there is one irrigation sensor to keep making up for the leak. Uh, outside the anterior chamber. So the chamber is very stable. And uh, yeah. How should a surgeon choose between the vacuum system or the flow, flow system? system? So uh, in the flow system, the, uh, the surgeons who are more comfortable with a peristaltic pump uh, may choose the flow system because you can actually set your flow rate. In the vacuum system, you can't set the flow rate based on the vacuum. Um, the system decides the flow rate for you. So since I had kept the highest vacuum, the max flow rate for me was 90 cc's per minute. But um, in the uh, peristaltic or the flow-based uh, setting, you can actually set your flow rate wherever you want. So that's the difference between the two uh, settings. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.